if we can be on top of it in the earliest days of AI now with data, synthetic data like Ledger's doing, there's teams doing models. Clearest reason for crypto to exist. Of course, we have the Bitcoin and the Ethereum and the decent lessons, all that stuff that we now know and love. Welcome to Eigenlayer Unlocked, an interactive educational journey through the Eigenlayer ecosystem created by technical founders and builders for the entire crypto community. A special thank you to our partners, Alllayer, Polymer, Authentic, Skate, and Lagrange for helping to make this happen. Our goal is to raise the collective knowledge of the Eigenlayer AVS ecosystem and unpack the technical designs of the top teams in space. Welcome to Eigenlayer Unlocked. Sura, we are at the Bini AI Summit. Hey. You had a great talk. Oh, thank you. Always have these key points. I think the beginning of this is the two parts of society that grows. It's coordination and innovation. So with this kind of framing of, of, of mind, how does decentralized AI come into this? Where does this happen? Yeah. So if you look at like, you know, to expand on that, the idea is that there is an underlying, you know, successful complex systems have an underlying layer of coordination on top of which free agents innovate, right? So there's a coordination layer and the innovation layer. A simple example is coordination layer, government, constitution, things like that. Innovation layer, free market where free agents can freely exchange goods and services. And when you think about AI and what, what has happened is AI and in general technology massively accelerates the free agent. So each individual has more power. And so that means more innovation happens in, in the system. But the coordination layer is still the old, like hundreds of years old technologies, like constitution and like the double entry accounting and money and so on. And what happens in AI is there's a debate between is AI going to kind of like break safety somewhere. And the, the, the solution that people are going to is let's go to the working coordination systems like the government and get yeah. regulation. Yeah. Instead, I think a different way of thinking, a crypto native way of thinking would yeah. be to say, can these agents bind themselves into coordination conditions using crypto and blockchain as a substrate? And one extreme example of this would be like all AIs are controlled by a human DAO, right? A human DAO basically unless the human DAO approves, an AI cannot do some actions or you can terminate an AI and things like that. That'd be like an extremal version of a coordination layer, which is crypto native, which can control like an, uh, an AI or an, an innovation layer there. So, but there are all kinds of intermediate things that we could do, right? Can you incentivize more decentralized AI? Can you incentivize the person with the data to work with the person with the model can you, work, can you incentivize people with different models to come together to create meta models? Can you incentivize, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of different things? Can you make sure, how do you bind a model to a blockchain? Yeah. Right? Like, how does a blockchain control a model? Yeah. Right? And, you know, Sentient has this mo a thing called loyalty, which is that, you know, a model will not do something unless instructed by its master. Yes. That should be like a blockchain. Yeah. And there are all these like, that, these are new computational problems, actually. Like these are more fundamentally theoretical problems that we need to solve. But I think the direction, this is much more exciting in my view, where instead of saying, oh, technology is going berserk, let's bring the regulators in who move yeah, at yeah, like, yeah. you know, hundreds of years old technology. And said, let's upgrade our coordination layer and yeah. build a pan-global, automated, self-enforcing coordination system. Yeah, I think um, not necessarily just for the the sake of decentralization, but for the sake of of who gets to kind of have the the end say in these systems and and where these models and this data is originating from is also very important because I, it's kind of flywheels and can create this butterfly effect. I think where if we can be on top of it in the earliest days of AI now with data, mm. uh, synthetic data like like Open Ledger's doing, there's teams doing models, mm. inferences. If we can be on top of this now, then the, the ramifications in the future are kind of built on a strong foundation. Absolutely. I think this is the clearest reason for crypto to exist. Yeah. Even exist, right? Like, of course, we have the Bitcoin and the Ethereum and the decentralized finance, all that stuff that we now know and love. But... 
today, if you look at like what is one of the most urgent problems of like society, say how do we grow and and uh, how do we make AI more decentralized? How do we make it bind to commitments that are not like you know violatable, verifiable, yeah, yes. verifiable and like self-enforcing? That yes. that is really a superpower that we can bring. And there's a short window of opportunity for us as a crypto space right. to actually actualize it, right. right? Because when we think about all kinds of other things, imagine crypto was there before Facebook, then the right Facebook would have been built on crypto sure. rails. Yes. And we are kind of in that phase right now. Yes. There is a chance yes. for the best AI in three years or in five years to be on crypto rails. And crypto has the advantage, especially in like payment rails yeah. and you know like intent-based designs for I want to do X, Y, Z on chain multi-step processes there's things that on with credit cards with TradFi, with bank accounts that you just can't do transactionally in the current setup of like web 2 or TradFi that blockchains enable absolutely peer-to-peer -peer interaction is the blockchains were made for ai and for ai agents but it's just about how we capitalize it and how we build it in the right way now yeah and so just kind of closing thoughts on how you think as a community we can kind of capitalize on making sure that we are, are building the strongest foundation possible. Yeah, I think like, you know, you mentioned, you know, crypto as payment rails. That's one direction that AI absolutely will and, you know, use. The other one is crypto as the incentive layer and tracking layer for, oh, I contributed data, you contributed the model, you take 3%, I take 10%, like all these kinds of coordination mechanisms bound via contracts. And... Going beyond that, I think uh, there is a lot of really powerful use cases where verifiable AI, right? Like I, I, I do an AI inference and I need to know that the answer is correct because I can use it for various things downstream. Like intelligent DeFi is one simple example that we talk about there. But in general, I think there is a short window of opportunity right now for us to build all these substrates. Proof of personhood is another one. Yep. How do you make I, sure that I can distinguish between a human and an AI? Yeah, right? Especially like if, with the like on-chain agents and things. Now with on-chain agents, yeah, okay, it's going to go crazy. It's really weird. It's going to go crazy really fast. <laughs> the other one I wanted to say is intelligence is by nature decentralized. Right? People are decentralized. Yeah. And crypto has a mechanism. You know, one of the things that, you know, all the AI people are talking about today is running out of data. Yeah. What better global data collection mechanism than crypto? Yeah. Right, like you can incentivize people really easily, not just for like pay for use, but also as owners in the system. So I think the scope for what sets of things can be done on crypto is actually quite large. Yeah. And on the other side, I think AI also has huge things to add to crypto, like which yes. we are not really doing right now. Yes. One of my like favorite things that nobody's talking about is, I you know people say oh, you know, these legal contracts are so difficult to read. Smart contracts are much better. But my experience being a crypto protocol forward is not, not bad. Okay, I can read and understand legal contracts. I badly understand, like, smart contracts. Because, right. you know, one underflow bug and, like, your money is all gone. Correct. Right? Like, that's just extreme yes. non-interpretability. And so I think the, my thesis is in the long term, contracts will be written in English and will be synthesized in code underneath the human layer. Contract is written in English, and then you come in and trade with it. Underneath, some LLM... Yeah, we're therapy. already getting there. We're, we're already like, getting there. Like, it's, it's going it's so happening. crazy so fast. Yes. So, in, in Ethereum, one of the things we think about a lot is client diversity. Correct. Right? Like, oh, there are many clients, and they all come to consensus. What about contract diversity? Yeah. Can I have a contract in English and then synthesize it into hundred different languages with different, yeah, with different implementations that are like they are exactly, yes. and then they all have to come to consensus. Otherwise, your state doesn't progress. Yeah. And if they disagree, then you fork. Yeah. So all of these things, I think there are superpowers that we are badly seeing as a community. Yeah. But I think the crypto XAI is the most intact. A lot of people think it's like some new meme coin thing. No, I know. But I think that is just a my lot. First, my first tweet about key takeaways from this conference was literally crypto times AI is the most interesting. And, and we're just scratching the surface and we, we, you know, we pay some attention to it, but we're so caught up on like the scaling Ethereum and yeah, that's nice. interoperability and these things. And it's like a lot of these problems that we're like thinking about constantly on like, in like this kind of like modular ecosystem are, can be solved by AI or at least AI can have a play a role in it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, the, uh, and conversely, for example, you know, oh, one of the questions was in the panel, 
how do you uh, have like these models which run at such insane scales and yeah. blockchain's throughputs are so small? Like right. how are you going to kind of like make and make that? How, where, where do you put all these data? And yeah. I think like a lot of the thinking from the modular paradigm can actually play a big, big role here because yeah. one node can do the computation, everybody can verify it and so yeah. on. So all those things. I think there's a lot of things to be done at the interface, but I think this, the time sensitivity of it is lost on people. Yeah, like that, that's the key takeaway here is that we have this like transitory period. This transitory period, I need to know something. Capitalize on. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you so much. This is awesome.